there seems to be a very common problem of users of iTunes Connect when they want to change and edit their bank accounts that payments flow into from the sales that they have. It's very easy once you know how, like many, many things to do with IT, computers, once you know it's a cinch. But if you don't know, it's extremely irritating. Now, I'm going to show what the mistake is that people tend to do and show the correct way to do it. So let's get started. So first of all, we're going to go to the iTunes Connect website, itunesconnect.apple.com, and you're going to be prompted for your Apple ID. The first page you're going to land on is this page, and uh, on here we're going to look for agreements, tax and banking. Hit that. Now, Apple's supposed to be very intuitive, and for me, for many other people, it's uh, logical to press banking here from the top menu, and then look in here and uh, try to edit. Now, you can touch the screen, you can touch anything you want. There's no option other than pressing your name, and that will bring up the bank details. And unfortunately here, you cannot edit the bank details. So do not be confused by this screen and going here. What we need to do is go back to the iTunes Connect screen up here and this is how to do it. So very slight difference. We go to agreements, tax and banking like before. Now on this screen, the agreements page, we're going to have paid books, uh, paid apps, uh, paid movies or TV if you're lucky enough to have those as well but I've only got paid books. So if you have the others, obviously they'll be listed separately. So on this page, I'm just going to press paid books here and it brings up my details. And what I want to do is, or it says bank accounts to the far right in blue, edit. Now we've got an option, edit current account or replace with a new account. So I'm going to press replace and then we're gonna go through the security. And here we are exactly where we want to be. But there are just two more things that I need to explain which aren't intuitive, which can cause a lot of stress, annoyance and frustration. So the first one is the seemingly simple and innocent looking name field at the top of the screen. The first thing you're supposed to fill in. However, it's not the name of your bank account. It's a name that you're going to give as like a nickname. And if you just simply enter your bank account name, you'll be given an error message like this. And uh, what it's doing is saying you can't have it again because you probably input it the previous time that you entered bank details in your Apple account. So it was okay the first time because it wasn't duplicated, but now it's going to be duplicated. So you get this perplexing message. This name is like your nickname for the account that you're using now. So this is your personal name for your bank. It's not your personal name on your bank account and it's not your business name on your bank account. So this is like calling it, you know, like this is my Seychelles bank account. This is my uh, Miami bank account. So I'm just gonna call it IW 2022. Now the second and final hurdle may catch out fewer people, but just in case, because it can be very annoying if you don't know why it's uh, calling it out as wrong, the IBAN number is invalid message. Now you've copied and pasted it perhaps or laboriously checked it over. The reason is that it's got spaces in. If the number's correct, uh, they do not tolerate any spaces in on this page. So just delete the spaces and uh, try again, you'll find it all goes through. You should find all the rest very straightforward. And at the bottom, on the left-hand side, you'll see a very small box you have to check before submitting the form. And we can see it's actually accepted. So once that's done, it's going to show the nickname that you gave it here, the actual bank name here, and you're part of the last four digits of your account number. So as I say, this is not the actual name on your account just the name that you want to give and it's going to process allow 24 hours and you can't make any updates until then so that's it that's all for today so i hope that's been useful for you thanks for watching and do consider checking out my playlist of other how to apple videos all sent around the idea of helping people out with things which can be frustrating 
Thanks for watching.